first two video programs covered excavator and oval track dozer undercarriages. In this video, we are looking at the Caterpillar high drive configuration. There are links to the previous videos in the comments section on YouTube. Before we get started, we should review some of the things to look for that we saw in the first two video programs. We said that sprocket teeth get sharp as they wear out. The degree of wear on the sprocket teeth is proportional to the wear on the track bushings. Where the track frames are mounted to the machines may leak oil. The wear on the front idlers can reveal alignment problems between the track frames and the sprockets. Damaged equalizer bars can put a strain on pivot shafts and cause track frame alignment problems. As bottom rollers wear, the outer flanges will cover the sides of the track links. All of these indicators apply to high drive undercarriages as well. Introduced in 1977 on the Caterpillar D10 crawler dozer, the high drive has generated plenty of opinion throughout the entire industry. The high drive, or elevated sprocket design, moves the drive sprocket from behind the track frame to above and just forward of the rear of the track frame. This configuration has many advantages and some disadvantages. In this video, we're going to show you what to look for when inspecting this type of undercarriage. All high drive undercarriages use sealed and lubricated tracks, also known as salt. The track pins still have the rubber plug in one end that we spoke of in the oval track dozer video. The track chains do wear different on the rail surfaces than they do on oval track machines. The chains are now running over two idlers. The idler will touch the links in the middle while the joint ends don't touch at all. This wears a belly in the middle of the rails which is noticed by the operators as vibration. The sprockets are of the segmented type found on oval track dozers and wear a little bit differently. Salt track maintains the distances between the link joints until the oil leaks out. Because of this the bushings wear down between the teeth. In addition to looking at the sharpness, we look at the thickness of the base in between the teeth. The track frames are mounted on a pivot shaft that is slightly in front of the sprocket. An equalizer bar in the middle holds up the front of the tractor frame. The equalizer bars are pinned to the track frames and most use a ball bushing on the ends. The inspection of these components is the same as you would do for an oval track machine. The front idler is secured to a cylinder which extends into the track frame and track adjuster. The cylinder is hard chromed and is subject to chrome failure over time. The track frame is filled with oil which keeps the recoil spring and track adjuster components from rusting. There is a seal at the joint and oil can leak in that area. The track adjuster is mounted on trunnions and caps that bolt through the outside of the frames which you can see and inspect. The weldments on the outsides of the track frame can crack and leak oil. The bottom rollers on the machine, smaller than a D8, are bolted directly to the frame and get the same type of wear as you see in an oval track machine. D8 and larger machines have suspended bottom rollers and pivoting idlers. The bottom rollers are mounted to bogey carriers which can pivot on a pin that has oil sealed in the joint. Rubber pads are installed above the center pin between the rollers and between the bogey and the track frame. They are bolted in so they can't fall out. The front idlers and front bottom rollers are mounted on a common hinge which allows a limited amount of oscillation. The rear idler and rear bottom roller are set up the same. Leaking bogey pivot pins are a concern. The seals in the bogey pivot joints usually last at least through a couple of sets of tracks and rollers. The rubber pads are also a concern and you can tell if they are weak by looking at the distance between the bogey pivot pin cap bolt and the bottom of the track frame. Let's do a quick inspection of this D8T dozer. This machine has the optional top rollers and standard suspended bottom rollers. The sealed and lubricated track links are made by Burco. The rails on the link show the classic denning behind each joint. The sprocket teeth are flat across the tops and not sharp. The track bushings have not been turned but show plenty of reverse wear. The top roller appears to be a bottom roller adapted to the carrier roller position and it shows the typical two valley wear on the running surface. The rear idler does not show any signs of misalignment. 
There's plenty of clearance between the bogey end cap top bolt and the track frame. We don't see any signs of leakage on the rollers or the bogey joints. The bottom roller flanges are covering the track rails, but there is clearance between the flanges and the track pin bosses. The track adjuster cylinder is out some, possibly indicating there might be some dry links. The front idler does not show much wear and appears to be in alignment with the sprocket. No leaks are seen on the pivot shaft to track frame joint. The equalizer bar appears to be intact. In summary, the track chains are not genuine Caterpillar. The rails on the track link show wear behind the joints. The sprocket teeth are not sharp and have plenty of material life left. The track bushings have not been turned but show plenty of reverse wear. The top roller flanges cover the rails but don't touch the pin bosses. Neither either shows any side wear and they indicate the tracks are running true to the sprocket. The bogey cushions appear to be good with plenty of clearance between the top cap bolt and the track frame. No oil leaks are seen on any of the rollers, bogey joints, or idlers. The track adjuster is adjusted out some, possibly indicating a dry link on this side. There were no oil leaks on the track frame pivot shaft, and the equalizer bar appears to be intact. I would estimate the undercarriage as a whole to be 50% or more worn. Let's take a look at some photos showing worn out components to give you something to compare to. The first photo shows sharp sprocket teeth. The second photo shows the rails of original cat track links. Note how much thicker they are than our inspected machine. If you look close you can also see the depressions in the middle and back of the rails. The next photo shows wear from roller flanges rubbing on track pin bosses. The roller flanges will look something like these. Double flange rollers worn this bad mean the inside flanges will be riding on the track bushings and wearing grooves in them. Here is a track adjuster cylinder extended nearly to the end of its travel. Run out that far for any amount of time and it will start leaking oil like the one in this photo. Note the oily dirt on the lower half of the track frame. I hope this is informative and helps you save money in the future on purchases, maintenance, or replacement of undercarriage on your high drive crawler tractor. If this content is helpful and you would like to see more, please hit the like button on YouTube and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching.